Today is very unique day for Krishi Jagran because we are going to have an interactive section with His Excellency Dr. Manoj, Secretary General of ARDO, African Asian Rural Development Organization. Very crucial organization that plays a big game in the field of rural development. And it connects with all the African Asian countries. And we know he has done an excellent job in that field. And he is into his second term with a lot of ideas in his mind how to be very vibrant organization in the field of rural development. Let us listen here for him. What ARDO is up to now? It's a great pleasure to talk to you and to your viewers and all those people who are associated with Christy Jagran. First of all, congratulations, lots of work you are doing on that perspective. And it's a very interesting platform to elaborate uh, this uh, very prestigious intergovernmental organization, African Asian Rural Development Organization. Is uh, I myself call it a manifestation of solidarity between Africa and Asia with a very focused mandate of rural development. Initially started in 1962, where the emphasis was more on rural reconstruction. But then there have been so many phases of development and so on. Now we, are, have, we feel the real need of having more connection, more inter exchange between Asia and Africa, especially for rural development and agricultural development. We know that nowadays this is the call of the day, this is the cry of the humanity also, where people are facing lots of problems on food security and nutrition security. As an organization, we are here to connect uh, these two continents. We've got member countries from Asia and Africa, and of course, obviously, we've got other partners also from different parts of the world, and the UN organization also forms part. We are connecting and working with them to bring or whatever most important things can be shared between these two continents to solve basic problems in the rural areas. If we go around enumerating, we know that most of the rural areas in Africa and Asia, where we usually say people, the population live in villages. So most of these problems are very uh, pertinent to these countries and these two continents. And this uh, organization is an intergovernmental organization. So connecting all the governments who are members with us, or their governments are willing to share uh, their way of uh, tackling the issues in rural development. Well, obviously, we've got many programs. Uh, maybe I can elaborate later on on that one. But these are the main programs. We are focusing on human resource capacity building. We provide uh, support for enhancement of human resources in our member countries. His Excellency, I would like to know, what is that one program you think has changed development of the rural development of these countries that ARDO initiated? Can you highlight one or two programs that has changed? As I say, we are having a series of programs on human resource development. We are touching practically all the areas. If I elaborate, you know, we are having the areas of women empowerment. Agriculture is the biggest chunk in that one. But uh, we are having women empowerment, youth empowerment, infrastructural development. So we are sharing uh, the best practices in different countries. And nowadays we've got uh, what we call uh, our ATM, Affordable Technology Menu, which is very high on our agenda on the strategic framework already developed till the year 2030 to be coterminous with the SDGs. So in this one now, we are championing the idea of taking technology to solve these problems. We've developed the human resources, but we still feel that they lack that technologies. So we need that transfer of technologies from one member country to another member countries. We've got different member countries at different level of the economic development. So this is the beauty of the organization. When these countries come together, they can share whatever has been advanced in some countries. In some countries, the technology are considered to be outdated, obsolete, but is still valid in other countries. So we play also an important role in transferring. This is an important program for us. 
We facilitate in exchange of experts also. Experts travel from one country to another. And uh, during the human resource development program, we give them an expose of those technologies when the experts are going there. And uh, we can always carry those technologies, let people implement it, feel it, and give the feedback and improve it. Excellent. See, ATM. The word itself gives the importance to that, you see. <laughs> the same way, sir, we were observing these days, you are also actively involved in the Millet's year of 2023. So, how was your experience and what all the things ADO did for that? As I said initially, you know, we are very much connected with the United Nations also. We have got an observer status in the United Nations. So, all yeah. the programs and all the organization of United Nations we do support their programs also. So we know that uh, we are very thankful to the government of India, which took the idea of uh, having an international year, and it was finally voted by the UN last year, as we know that that was the international year of millet. We also wanted to surf on that wave, especially on the demand from our member countries. Some of our member countries are very much interested in going back to that millet as a miracle type of cereals, something which has been forgotten, but the potential is there. The enormous potential is there. Um, there we've got a series of programs. We've organized uh, online meetings. Uh, first of all, we've got an online training programs where we could capture the enthusiasm of most of our member countries to go even forward on that. After that, we've got uh, uh, a workshop also we've been organizing. We've got a special publication on millets coming from experts of these different countries. India is one of the main producers, but we've got many other countries in Africa, especially in the sub-Saharan region, producing millet, and they are looking forward to expanding that sector. So from that perspective, we have also got some uh, very interesting articles compiled in a journal where this is also another program for our do, where we publish journal, scientific journal, to let people uh, disseminate information and uh, get uh, more interaction with researchers in their particular domain. And uh, very recently, in December itself, we had uh, our millet roundtable, where we had uh, people from 12 countries approximately coming in, and then uh, the FAO program also was being held in Hyderabad, we joined heads together. We had a very, very good brainstorming session on how to take further those benefits which have been uh, enumerated during the millet year, how to carry them further uh, 2024 and beyond 2024. So we came up with a resolution uh, at that roundtable meeting to have a sort of what we call it millet advancement uh, uh, alliance. So another alliance or a platform has to be created. This is the real uh, platform where we are giving that uh, opportunities for all those interested in taking further the millet or the millet mission. We will always be working on that also. That's fantastic. So we also want to uh, thank you in a way because you had been very supportive the new concept that we brought forward, uh, Millionaire Farmers of India. What was your experience about MFI and what do you feel about how it can take into, uh, into ARDO countries? Thank you again very much. That was a very, very innovative type of approach. Uh, thank you to you, you and Krishi Jagran to nurture that idea itself. I know it is a bit uh, contradictory to the norms. But I think this is what is really needed if we want to change the perception of farmers, perception of youngsters, and perception of women. Uh, especially, we know agriculture is one of the toughest sectors in any economies because it is subjected to many factors which are beyond control. Expectations are not that high, fluctuations and climate changes are affecting the sector. Vagaries also are there. But uh, the, the way the award has been presented, it has been conceived, it gives lots of inspiration and aspiration to the uh, people, to, especially in India. I was uh, very much uh, happy to be present also during that award ceremony where we could easily pick up that uh, the big momentum has been created. 
we could easily see that momentum. And uh, being a secretary regional of these 32, 33 countries now, I want to take up the idea. I will already discuss with some of the ambassadors. I want to take up these ideas. At least the concept has to be floated to these countries. If this is going to be imbibed in these countries, we will see most of these youngsters, they will come, they will see, they will have another way of uh, assessing and looking at agriculture. This is where we, where many countries have been trying to, uh, to promote that concept of agribusiness or agro-entrepreneurs. But factually, this is an idea when we are bringing uh, those heroes in agriculture. We have given them, I said, we have given them the red carpet and uh, they will be the one guiding and inspiring more and more people, not only in India, but now hopefully in Africa and Asia also. That's fantastic. So, so I would like to know, what is your vision for the next few years in Ardo? The mandate of Ardo is already set. We've already got that mandate of rural development. Okay. Uh, but uh, we've already analyzed uh, the development strategies, development models since 1960. The 1960s, we've known many countries have got different approaches to rural development. But now where we've reached, uh, we've realized, especially after crossing the, uh, uh, what we say, the COVID era or the COVID issues which came in, we are realizing that we must bring in more science to the society. More science and more technology has to be given to the society. So if we look from that perspective, uh, we are looking for countries which are a bit more advanced to share uh, their own uh, experiences and their own technologies for greater dissemination in these agricultural and rural areas or communities in Africa and Asia. And we must not forget if our vision wise, you know, many of these developed countries, maybe there will be a very little population and percentage wise 30-40% will be living in the rural areas by 2050. But uh, for Africa and Asia, especially Southeast Asian and uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, we are still having the statistics are showing us when we forecast uh, whatever database we are having. We'll see that uh, even up to 2050, we'll be having more than 50% still living in the rural areas. So if you are talking about sustainable and uh, uh, inclusive growth, we have to develop our rural areas. So development of rural areas nowadays means uh, human resource development, investment have to be diverted to those areas, and obviously with the technology and scientific. I'm even, we are even coining the words of uh, uh, technology diplomacy. So between countries, we have to transfer these technology which are appropriate and facilitate that type of development. And once when we are talking about development in the rural areas, the over spilling effect will be on the whole country. We always know many of our member countries are facing that issue, people migrating from the rural areas because of non-development there. So the issue, the vision is to bring that vibrancy to de-risk agricultural activities so that people are confident. This is why I'm happy with that uh, award, the perception we you brought in here. So we have to change the mentality and change the perception, but factually bring development through uh, human resource development and technology dissemination. At some point in time, we have to make sure that we connect uh, these rural areas with markets, make sure that trade also within Africa, within uh, uh, intercontinental also, has to be, they have to be uh, enhanced. This is the vision and we are working towards that direction. Yes. That's the leadership, a vision for the rural development and he see, finds that technology is going to change that and he wants that technology reach to the uh, deep most the rural area and he is confident with reaching technology and knowledge and new ideas the world will change and it can happen only by changing the rural India and there the Ardo and His Excellency. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>